but also women showed blatant sexual interest in me. This was surprising as I'm not facially that attractive. I'm about average, but the fact that I had big arms made women swoon. <laughs> Man, this guy's hyping up gear way more than he should be. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreadies.com. Today we are going to be reacting to, I, I don't even know how I fell into this thread. I think I've, okay, I've had about a million tabs open on my browser for a while now to the point where they, anytime a video idea pops up, I'll either write a note or I'll leave it on my tabs open. And then after a while, I've accumulated this giant clusterfuck of a Google Chrome where I have like a billion tabs open from video ideas I've had from like months ago. So I'm trying to go through all the tabs and get rid of them. And I have this one pop up, Quora. And it is, uh, Quora.com is a weird site that, I don't know, you ask any question you want, you get it answered by experts or something, I don't know. But this question, somebody must have sent it to me over DM or something and thought it was interesting because I don't see why it would, I would have left it up. What is it like taking anabolic steroids? There's 24 answers, but one, is upvoted the most and has over 240, 239.6 thousand views. And it's a, it's just a, like an article basically. Well, it's like a comment, like 239,000 views on a random like thread on a Quora question, like seems like a lot, I would think. So I thought, you know, I thought I would react to it because it's a Carl B. Sather, an MBA from, St from Stanford Graduate School of Business in 1994. And why would we not be interested in what Carl B. Sather is saying? So he says, I haven't read this for months, by the way. Like, I'm just reading this fresh with you guys. I was about 45 when I did my first cycle. I already suspected my testosterone levels were low because I was packing on belly fat too easily. I was getting erectile dysfunction. My recovery from weight training was getting worse. and was feeling blah overall. I went to my doctor to get tested, and sure enough, I was at 310 nanograms per deciliter where the range is 300 to 1100 nanograms per deciliter but seeing that i was within range my doctor said i was fine i sure as hell didn't feel fine but he said we'd look at again in a year so basically the guy was you know fine for like a fucking hundred year old but not fine for a guy who is trying to still have a high quality of life and high performance. I then started looking into testosterone replacement therapy and then into actual full-blown cycles. I did about six months of research into the subject by reading everything I could get my hands on. This included books, papers, and a lot of online forums. Fortunately, I have a good friend who was trying to become a pro bodybuilder, so I had asked him for advice as well. Long story short, I started with a mild cycle that was no more than 350 milligrams of testosterone and 200 milligrams DECA per week. I can tell you this, I felt like a demigod for about three months. My fat melted right off, my muscles got big and defined, my weights at the gym shot up, and my libido was like that of a 16 year old. The sun shone again everywhere I looked. I wasn't aggressive nor angry, on the contrary, I was far more tolerant of other people. If someone bumped into me on the street because they had their eyes on their cell phone, I'd laugh it off. So obviously everyone's, their response, the way they can handle things emotionally on gear is going to vary person to person as well as the compound selection, of course, and based on how your response is to it genetically, you know, different kind of uh, compounds have different affinities for progesterone receptors, estrogen receptors, androgen receptors, etc. And your own genetic makeup will kind of determine how you handle these compounds and how you respond accordingly based on a myriad of different factors so some people get more aggressive some people actually get a heightened sense of well-being it's all uh, kind of depends on the person it was so good that i after i came off cycle i was counting the days until it was okay to do another cycle and the minute the light was green again i did another cycle but a bit higher 450 tests and 300 deca i was even stronger even bigger even better unfortunately i think that cycle did some noticeable damage to my hairline yeah, t unfortunately, that is a expected side effect of using, uh, you know, fucking 4.5 times the amount of tests your body would naturally produce and uh, 300, de 300 deca on top of that. There are some side effects such as bloating, which needs to be controlled with anti-estrogen drugs like Arimidex. Nope. Uh, those drugs also cause side effects and are probably not great for long-term use. Correct. And instead of using anti-estrogen drugs like Arimidex, maybe just make a cycle that you can actually tolerate with compounds that are not going to be problematic to the point where you need to deploy another ancillary, ancillary drug on top 
That is cardio and neurotoxic. Yet despite all that, I did three more mild cycles. I experimented with some oral steroids as well. All in all, my physique completely changed. I could run up three flights of stairs with luggage in my hands. I was seen as a strong guy by young and old alike, but also women showed blatant sexual interest in me. This was surprising as I'm not facially that attractive. I'm about average, but the fact that I had big arms made women swoon. <laughs> Man, this gets hyping up gear way more than he should be. Say what you will, the ladies like muscular guys, there is no denying it. Today, I don't do full-blown cycles anymore. I do a minimum, which I found for me is 100 migs of tests per week. My libido is good, my recovery is good. While I don't feel like I'm Superman, I also don't suffer the side effects from a full-blown cycle. So 100 milligrams of testosterone per week after you cleave off the ester, like you're probably looking at like legitimate therapeutic TRT, not necessarily like high normal optimized TRT, but you're probably looking at therapeutic TRT levels for the majority of people. Bottom line, in my opinion, if you're over 40, don't even hesitate. Do your research and you'll be happy you did. If you're under 30, you'd have to be a moron to take them. <laughs> Until I was 35, I could pack on lean muscle with a good diet and proper training. Taking steroids that early is a waste. So that's an interesting conclusion because he's basically saying wait until you are borderline hypogonadal to then take a super physiological amount of gear to try and build as much muscle as possible when you probably just need TRT at that point just to function. So to be honest, the real answer is probably not that in my opinion. Like this would not be my advice whatsoever, but just logically your body can tolerate drugs better when you're younger. So no, I'm not advising, I would never advise somebody to take gear like before, you know, their mid twenties or some shit, you know, of course not. But at the end of the day, your ability to bank myonuclei is going to be highest when you are primed as a human being to tolerate drugs too. So you have a certain window of time where you can not only tolerate the drugs better, but in addition to that, you can actually utilize them and build up that bank of myonuclei that you can then draw off of later in life to retain muscle easier with less. So if you're in your 40s and you're trying to build a foundation with gear, how much easier and more damaging is it going to be to your body? Not how much easier, how much more damaging is it gonna to be to your body to use the amount of drugs you need to use to build your goal physique at 45 than it would have been at 25? Like I think the answer is obvious at which time your body would tolerate the drug use and the heightened body weight and the heightened blood pressure and the heightened everything. And obviously there's different things you can do to attenuate that. But at the end of the day, I would never tell a guy in his 40s to start blasting. That would be like the time where you start to say, okay, dude, like you should probably hang up the idea of being too heavy than you need to be heavier than you need to be and look at, you know, therapeutic replacement, maybe, you know, slightly more than that. If you're, you know, willing to risk it a bit, but it's not something I would never advise if I had to choose between the two, wait until you're in your forties when you tolerate drugs, the absolute worst, and you're at the highest vulnerability to disease. Why the fuck would I tell a guy in his forties? Okay. Now try and build your goal physique. When I could have told the same guy at 25, build as much muscle as you can now, and then you can take it easy in your 40s and actually hold on to the majority of that muscle tissue with almost no drug exposure when you can actually not tolerate the drugs that well versus when you were in your 20s and you could tolerate them well. So, you know, I think the answer is obvious and it's just interesting how some of the stuff gets uh, like upvoted, you know, to the point where it's like, oh yeah, this guy definitely knows his shit. He definitely knows what he's talking about. Like, this is the top upvoted one. We have, uh, I don't know how qualified these people are. Um, usually there's like, Studied human biology at Harvard University. Um, like this guy's an MBA from Stanford. Like, I don't know. Like I th typically on this site, I don't know if it's like a pretentious, like sort of like a LinkedIn site or something where it shows like all your qualifications when you post or something. But typically it seems to show like where you graduated from, what school you went to, what your, what your fucking degrees in. And uh, Carl is way off the mark in my opinion. I would never tell a guy wait until you're in your 40s and then expose yourself to dangerous amounts of drugs. That would be a horrible idea when everything is at its least tolerable. You have the least um, ability to tolerate blood pressure increases, the least ability to handle cardiac remodeling. You have the worst ability to handle liver stress. Like everything's just fucking deteriorated 20 years later and you think now is the time to blast the shit? Like, no, dude. If you've made it into your 40s and now you're thinking, you know what, I wanna crank my socks off. Like, no, dude. You probably missed the window on that. So 
Anyways, that is uh, my review and analysis of uh, Carl B. Sather and uh, his uh, gear advice. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, morepleats18.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description down below. Uh, my TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas I designed myself from scratch, my recommended lab test panels for diagnostics and staying healthy, and anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.